Okay, now that we speak about uh, securing both the management plane and the control plane, we're gonna get next up to the more complex topic to securing the data plane. So we're gonna speak about transiting traffic to devices and how can we control at the basic level for the CCNE blueprint, how can I control traffic transiting to a router or a, we're gonna see basically a firewall back and forward. So we're gonna introduce the concept of the firewall. I'm going to see how many types of files we have, traditionally speaking, from the his from history to till nowadays, and which ones which ones we're going to be using still. Uh, like, are going to still be using the uh, old files? Let the old file implementations are are going to be using only the new ones. Which which ones and exactly why? We're going to see in a couple. So file is a system that stands for just basic. Usually, when you don't know what something means exactly. Uh, like if you don't know what a file is or if you don't know what you're going to see like for example what OCC, OCSP is you ju as long as you know what the acronym stands for like we're going to see that OCSP it stands for online certificates um, online certificate services protocol then just by knowing the name and the technology that is going to be related is going to tell you exactly what it does so file is a system that stands for a wall so it's composed of two words wall and fire so wall means that the system controls like what traffic is allowed to pass the wall and in which direction, like a regular wall. Think about back in the in the war time when there were, were ba walls of filtering. So few people were allowed to cross the wall from left to right, from right to left. The same thing in here. And fire, which means allow traffic will be heavily inspected to ensure compliance with security policy. So like in war zone, when somebody was passing uh, to a checkpoint, which was a firewall basically, then they were, were heavily inspected to, uh, to for identity and to make sure that, you know, they were being asked what, what are we going to the other direction, what is the scope, what are we trying to do. So the same thing in here. Now, generically speaking from history, the file used to sit between a trusted zone, the LAN side, where you have your users, printers, IP cameras, and everything else, and an untrusted zone, which was the internet. And main scope was being to control traffic coming in from the untrusted zone. So traditionally speaking, you would allow all traffic to flow from the LAN side towards the internet, so from trusted to untrusted, and you would want to control only who can come in your network in the trusted side from the internet from the untrusted side. But nowadays, because as we were speaking the other couple of days, uh, more and more attacks are easily being launched from the inside of the network. So the attackers have so many tools to uh, control the, the host on the inside of the network. So you're going to be able to launch more and more controls from more and more attacks from the inside of the network. And as the network border becomes pretty much invisible with, with a lot of people traveling and working remotely, or with a lot of uh, BOAD happening where a lot of people are bringing their own devices to work and they have also their, their own devices which are going to be accessing the network remotely via whatever they're traveling to or via from, from their home uh, location, let's say. So the, the network edge becomes less and less uh, touchable. It's pretty much everywhere. So with, with the range of attacks which are being launched from the, launched from the inside and with the fact that the, the network become, became borderless a long, a long time ago, then having that in mind, it means that there's no more trusted zone. We have to control traffic flowing always. So both from, both, both from the LAN side to the internet and of course both from the internet to the LAN side. Now let's speak about uh, what a firewall does exactly for all design overview. So firewall is going to define traffic policies between its security zones, which a security zone is a vague uh, concept, which is going to be something which you define in general. We're going to speak in a couple of ways as we go into more details of the firewall. But for example, on the ASA firewall, the security zones from the ASA firewall's point of view are going to be the security levels. While from the iOS zone based policy firewall point of view, you have to actually define your own security zones. There are no security zones built in from the transit point of view. Of course, neither on the firewall we have security levels defined, defined we're going to see in a couple, but on the SA firewall, as soon as you define security levels, then by default, those will be behave like the security zones 
uh, on the, from the firewall point of view. While on the iOS zone-based policy firewall, you're going to define security names or zone, and those are going to be uh, security zones by, by names, not by security levels, and those will be your security zones. Now, common, let's say, zone definitions is going to be inside, where is going to be your most, tr most trusted network, the LAN side, the outside, the least trusted network, the internet, and DMZ, which is somewhere in between, where you usually keep your publicly available servers or services. So, uh, st speaking about uh, from the from the previous slide, where, for example, uh, in in regular files from historical speaking, you would allow all traffic from the land side, from the inside zone to the outside zone. So that's why you have trusted to untrusted allowed by default, and then untrusted to trusted disallowed by default then the DMZ is kind of in between because in the DMZ zone you would put your publicly available services which have to be accessible by both the users and the internet and maybe also from the DMZ zone you may need to access some resources from the inside zone from the inter from the from the land side so that's why it's kind of like in between it's not a trusted it's not an untrusted because it has to speak with both worlds. It's it's also gonna it's gonna be accessible by both the inside, the trusted side, and also by the outside, the untrusted side. So in general, we have other two zone for all design with inside and outside, where as we're saying nowadays, you have to control traffic both ways. But in the old ways, in out was allowed by default, out in drop by default, and that was good enough. All I guys have a three for all design zone. We have inside DMZ and outside, and we can control which traffic is going to flow uh, where exactly. Of course, you can define as many DMZ zones as you want. So you're gonna you're gonna do a logical grouping uh, of the DMZ zones. You can define multiple DMZ zones based in general on the role uh, of the servers you have in the DMZ zone. So you may create two DMZ zones. One is gonna be, for example, for your web servers, and one for your your FTP servers. Or it's gonna be one for one for your uh, web and FTP servers, and the other DMZ zones zones for your VPN uh, VPN gateways, for example. And of course, we can give different names in there. These are these are just generic terms and names. It doesn't mean you have to use those exact names as you build as you build your network. So we can name the inside as trusted, the outside as untrusted, and DMZ you can call it like VPN or like web servers or whatever. These are just generic terms uh, for the sake of the example. Now, from the firewall evolution point of view, so let's see. What were, were the first versions of the firewall and how this evolved? And we're going to speak about each of those in detail. So first we had what is called packet filters, which our status in nature are going to speak in a couple about what that means. And those are going to be the regular access lists. So if you know what access lists do, you have your answers or on why those are stateless in nature are going to be stateless firewalls or stateless uh, or just packet filters because of the nature of the access lists. One, after the packet filters, they came up with the application level gateways or ALG, which those are known as proxies or most commonly known the web proxy servers, which we have spoken about uh, previously a bit as well. Then they finally came in, came in with what is called the stateful packet filters or known as the firewalls nowadays, because pretty much all firewalls nowadays are going to be stateful packet filters. And those are going to combine uh, ACLs, so the packet filters with the application level gateways, do, that, do the inspection of traffic in a stateful manner, and also are going to have added features. And finally, we have the next generation of virals, which is mostly just a marketing term, because pretty much the next generation of firewall, what it does, it's, it's like a stateful packet filter, it's going to do stateful firewalling, but it's going to also provide additional security functionalities to address nowadays security requirements. We're going to speak in a couple of about what those are. 
but most of those features were available to begin with even in stateful firewalls. It's just the way we do those inspections nowadays, which for real makes them like a next generation firewall because it's going to address next generation security requirements to call it simple.